This screencast covers the material from Module 6, Lesson 5, where we investigate patterns in vertical and horizontal lines and interpret points on the plane as distances from axes. Uh, task 1, uh, use the coordinate plane to the right to answer the question. The following questions. It says use a straight edge to construct a line that goes through points A and B. Label that line E. Well, again, I have... Uh, uh, haven't figured out a way to do a straight edge on the iPad easily here without making problems, so I'm going to freehand it, but I expect my students to use a straight edge. And you don't need a ruler, just a straight edge. And I'm going to carefully draw as best I can a line. Remember, the lines have uh, arrows on each end, indicating they go on forever. I'll label that E. It says line E is parallel to which axis? Well, I'm, this is my line E. It's not parallel to my Y axis, but it is parallel to my X axis. So I'll say that it is parallel to the X axis. And it's perpendicular. Now perpendicular means it intersects at a right angle. And if we look at E, it intersects at a right angle to the Y axis. So we'll put in Y. Plot new two more points on E. Call them C and D. Now, we can choose any place we want to, and I'm just going to arbitrarily uh, put a point there, and I'll put a point here. So we'll label this C, and this one will be D. Now, I need to find the values of the coordinates for A. And, of course, once again, we do that by looking at our x-axis, and we're going to go and draw our vertical line from point A. We see that we uh, intersect our x-axis here. Now, uh, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, so we have an x-value of 3. Now, I'll return to my point A, and I'm going to draw a line horizontally from my point A to my y-axis, and I intersect that at 1, 2, 3, 4. Just because they're not labeled doesn't mean we can't figure that out. Let's go on to B. Moving along my x, or my, to my B, making a line down to my x-axis, I see that I have 11. And again, moving from B to the y-axis, I see that it is 4, just like it is with A. We'll see a pattern emerge here. C. In this case, draw a vertical line from C to my x-axis, and I have a value of, well, it's a little offset there, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. And again, we have a value of y4. And finally, D, we see that we have a value of 8 for X. And once again, the value for uh, Y is 4. What do all the points on line E have in common? They all have a value of 4. Or y. Now, finally, uh, 1f, give the coordinates of another point that would fall on the x, uh, on line E with an x coordinate greater than 15. Well, it really doesn't matter. As long as my value for my y is 4, I can name anything. And any value greater than 15, I could just do 16, I could do 20. I could do 100. And someplace further out on this coordinate plane, beyond what we have written here, we could plot them and they would fall on the same line E. For task, uh, the second task here, we say uh, it tells us to plot the following points on the coordinate plane. One and a half, one, and uh, one and a half, two and a half, uh, etc. So now we have values of a half. Let's take a look at our coordinate plane here. We notice that for every 
two of these intervals here, we have one half. So if I wanted to plot one quarter, it would be here. If I wanted to plot three quarters, it would be here. We can figure that out even though it's not labeled. Again, if we look from zero to one, we see that we have one, two, three, four intervals. So each interval is one fourth. Let's begin plotting our values. Starting with P, I have one and a half for X. So I'm going to go along this vertical line here, and one half for y, I have to find the intersection and plot my points. So one and one half and one half would be p. Let's go on to q. q is again one and one half for the x value, so it's going to be on this line, and two and one half for the y, so it's going to be along this line. So we'll now plot that point, one and one half, and two and one half, and we'll uh, label that Q. R, one and one half, one and one fourth. So we're going to one and one half, one and one fourth. We will plot that as R, and one and one half, three fourths for S. So we're along the same line, and three fourths is right there, S. So now we need to use a straight edge to connect that. Once again, I have not figured out a way to work a straight edge on my iPad. So I'm going to write it as neatly as I can. Move off a little bit here. There we go. And again, I expect my students to use their straight edge. And we'll label that H. It's not that hard to find a straight edge and use it correctly. It's an important skill that you'll find you need to use in future years with future lessons. So now we've uh, drawn that, and it says in line H, X equals what for all the values? Well, if I look at my ordered pairs here, in every case, X is 1 and 1 half. Circle the word. Line H is parallel or perpendicular to the X axis. Well, here's my X axis, and here's my Y. And I see that it intersects at a right angle, so it would be perpendicular. Line H is parallel or perpendicular to Y. Well, the Y axis and H will never intersect, so they're parallel. What patterns do we see? Uh, what pattern in the coordinate pairs let, that lets you know that H is vertical? Uh, we've noticed that all values of X are the same. And we could uh, look at the previous lesson, our previous uh, little uh, part number one, if we have the values of y are always the same, we know that it is a horizontal line. We'll apply this knowledge in the next problem. For each pair of points below, think about the line that joins them. For which pairs is the line parallel to the x-axis? Circle your answers without plotting them. Explain well you know, how you know. Well, I'm not going to plot them, but I, I am just going to just make a little reference here. This is my x, and this is my y-axis, and my x-axis is horizontal. So if I want a line parallel to the x-axis, it's got to be uh, horizontal. And remember what we learned in the previous one? Our values for y would always be the same for a line that is parallel to the x-axis. So we're going to look at our values of y. We have 2 and 2 tenths and 2 and 2 fourths here. So that doesn't work out. I have 9 in my y for my y coordinate and 9 here. So yes, that one is correct because I could label this 9 right here, right? My y value of 9 and I would have a line that is parallel to my x-axis. And going on to my last choice, I have 2 and 8. Again, this is not parallel. And again, explain how you know. Well, I've, I've explained that to you. So uh, I'm not going to write it out, but you can uh, listen once again if you need help in writing your answer to the corresponding problem in your homework. Now for four, we are 
looking for uh, the opposite here. For each pair of points below, think about the line that joins them. For which pairs is the line parallel to the y-axis? Circle your answers, then give two other coordinate pairs that would also fall in this line. Okay, well, I'm going to draw that sketch once again. So I have my x and my y axes. I want to be parallel to my y axis. My y axis is vertical, so I would have to have a line like that where my, again, my values for x would all be the same. So instead of looking at the value of the y axis, we're going to look at the value of the x axis and look for the same. So I have 4 and 6. That one's out. I have 3 fifths and 1 fifths. And that one's out. And if I look at my third choice, I have 8 tenths and 8 tenths. That works. So again, I could say that the x value here is 8 tenths, and that would be parallel to the y axis. I need two other coordinates, it doesn't matter. Whatever I have, I have to have 8 tenths for my uh, x value. And it doesn't matter what I have for my y value, because as long as the x value is always 8 tenths, it will fall upon that line that is parallel to the y axis. Okay, number five, write the coordinate pairs for three points that be can, can be connected to construct a line that is five and one half units to the right and parallel the y-axis. Again, I'm going to draw a diagram. It won't hurt if you to do the same if you get a little confused by these. So I'm going to have my x and my y-axis. I want to be parallel to my y-axis, so I've got to have a straight line like that. And whatever my value for x is, it has to be 5 and 1 half right there. Okay, so what does that tell me? That tells me my value for x has to be 5 and 1 half in all cases. So whatever I have for x, it has to be 5 and 1 half. And I can choose any value for y that I like. They'll all work. Write the coordinates of three points that lie on the x-axis. Okay, let's draw a diagram once again. We have our x and our y. It has to be on this axis right here, on the x-axis. Well, if we are on the x-axis, our value for y must be 0. And uh, conversely, if we're on the y-axis, our x value must be 0. So we're going to, again, set up three pair. Again, the value for z uh, y must be 0. It doesn't matter what I put in for my x. Uh, whatever, uh, as long as my y uh, coordinate is 0, it will be on the x-axis. And any value for x will work. This goes back to the previous lesson. And uh, uh, I didn't make a screencast for that because the homework was uh, a very personal in nature. Uh, there was no one correct answer. But let's look at this. It says, Adam and Janice are playing Battleship. Presented in the table is a record of Adam's guesses so far. He has hit Janice's Battleship using these coordinate pairs. What should he guess next? How do you know? Use, use, explain using words and pictures. Well, I can kind of set up a, a rough coordinate plane here. But that would be a little bit difficult. Let's take a look at what we have. So I'm going to maybe partially make a coordinate plane based upon these values. I have an x of 3, and I have a y of 11. That's a hit. x of 2, y of 11. And we have 3 uh, for the x and 10 for the y. And uh, same with the rest of the values. So I'm going to kind of make a rough little sketch of a coordinate plane. We're going to uh, kind of make a series of parallel lines. 
and I'm going to represent my y values here. I'm going to go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We can uh, sort of make that here. Okay, and we're going to kind of have a cutaway, and I'm going to have my values for x, and I'm going to start with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what do we have here? 3, 11, we have a hit. So I'll put an x there for my hit. And I have 2, 11, that's a miss. I have 3, 10, that's a hit. And I have 4, 11, that's a miss. And I have 3, 9, that's a miss. Well, what am I going to guess? Well, looking at this diagram gives a pretty clear explanation. We know that we have one end of our ship here, right? We know that it cannot extend further. It cannot extend to, say, 3-8, uh, because that's the end of the ship right there. We know that the ship is going vertically. So where are we going to guess next? Well, we're going to guess 3-12. And that's most likely going to be another hit. So I used the uh, diagram. I've also described it with words. Uh, you could do something similar with your corresponding problem in the homework. The, uh, drawing out the diagram like this really helps, uh, sort of helps you explain and uh, figure out how to verbalize how to uh, explain what your next guess would be. Again, I didn't draw out the whole coordinate plane. I made it an abbreviated version of it uh, to save a little time, and freehanding a coordinate plane, of course, would be a great deal of work.